Today is the 26th of April, Thursday. March, rather. It's March 26th. Uh, and next week, starting the 30th of March and through the first week of April, we are doing some parachute tests up at Ames, at the, at the full-scale wind tunnel up there. And we're doing our final campaign of parachute tests for the qualification of the MSL supersonic parachute. When the MSL spacecraft hits the atmosphere, it's going very fast. Fortunately, the heat shield, uh, through friction with the atmosphere, absorbs 98% of all of that energy. So we start off at 17,000 miles an hour, and we can slow down to about 1,000 miles per hour. That's the point where we have to open up the parachute. The problem is, on Mars, the atmosphere is so thin that even at 1,000 miles per hour, we're not generating that much force. So we need a really, really, really big parachute. One of the most difficult things to do is to test the strength of the parachute. Uh, the only way to do that is to actually inflate it. Either you drop it from a helicopter or you put it in a wind tunnel. We tried dropping it from a helicopter, but we were so big and it was just, it was not a very elegant test. And so we abandoned that and we decided to go into the wind tunnel. Well, we had to go to the world's largest wind tunnel in order to accommodate this big of a parachute. The test section in this wind tunnel is 120 feet wide, 80 feet high. It's, it's absolutely enormous. So it sounds pretty straightforward, sounds pretty easy, but uh, parachute testing is never without its surprises. Three, two, one, fire. When we got up there, we built we built a few really nice chutes. We brought them up to the uh, to the wind tunnel, and we started testing them. And sure enough, we got what's called an inversion. The parachute opened up inside out. And the parachute uh, blew apart basically. So tunnel's fine, uh, but the parachute is uh, it's a loss. So. We'll have to see what we get when we do our full-scale analysis, but definitely failed on that one side first. Once it failed in one place, it was uh, it was done. If you lose it in one place, you lose the whole thing. So we called it quits for that first test program, and we convened, and, and we were scratching our heads. We we assembled all the experts. We we had a workshop, and the problem is we didn't have enough data to figure out what was happening. We didn't have enough cameras in there. So we crammed that wind tunnel with as many cameras that we could get. We had high def cameras, we had 35 millimeter cameras, we had three or four different high speed cameras. Uh, it was just the most photographs that a, a parachute inflation test any of us had ever seen. Oh, oh we, got, we nailed it. We just drilled that, it's perfect. Perfect, they're both perfect. Oh, even a thousandth of a second shutter speed. It's still a little blurry. That is awesome. Bet you've outdone yourself. This is stellar. Congratulations, hey, my friend. Without you guys. Oh, no. that, that footage is awesome. That, that footage doesn't exist anywhere else in the world. Any parachute ever. I kid you not. We have no idea. We have no idea. We have no idea if they all look like that or if none of them look like that because we've got nothing to base it against. You know, every time you have one of these tests, even though you've done them again and again, you know, there's always that pressure that you have to, you have to perform because the visual data, the high-speed video, was really some of the most important data that was being collected. 
you can't put uh, instrumentation on the parachute. So the only, uh, the only thing to record the, the parachute really was the high-speed video. And the responsibility for that was on the photographers. So yeah, we, we felt that stress. We felt that very keenly.